Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other Healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, health situation you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about ingredients, formulations, skin health questions, comments or success stories you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please head over to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We've got blog stories, uh, blog posts, news stories, videos, all up at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com. You can sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team off the website as well for a one-time $25 fee if you're an entrepreneur or you're entrepreneurially minded, if you want to be part of the trillion-dollar health and wellness business, if nutritional supplementation has helped you or your loved ones and you want to help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, or if you just want to get your longevity products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee, you can join the Brightside Ben team, be a distributor, call 866-735-2470 for more information. That's 866-735-2470 for more info. You can also sign up right off our website's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Also would like to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com if you're dealing with blemished skin or dark spots, if you are looking for good anti-aging products, if you're tired of having just a whole bunch of skin health products and you want to simplify your skincare program, skincare regimen, please check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream for burns or for moisturization, for lips, for extremely dry skin. Our Truth Retinol 5% Gel if you're dealing with wrinkles or you don't want to be dealing with wrinkles. If you've got hyperpigmentation or acne blemishes, Truth Retinol 5% Gel is made with retinol as well as vitamin C. And, of course, our Truth Transdermal Sea Balm and Truth Transdermal Sea Serum voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar Magazine. All our Truth Treatment products are made without preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, surfactant, water, silicon, oil, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want ever in any of our Truth Skin Health products. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, welcome back to The Bright Side, friends. We've been talking about heart disease and the electromagnetic nature of the body, the electromagnetic nature of the heart and cardiac health, as well as the health of the body. Heart disease is the most important and the most prevalent of the chronic degenerative diseases, which doctors call non-communicable diseases, meaning they don't spread like an infection. You've got infectious diseases, which spread uh, like an infection. They're infectious. And non-communicable diseases, which do not spread 
They include things like heart disease, heart attacks, strokes, hypertension, diabetes, cancer, autoimmunity, neurological issues, dementia, Alzheimer's, Huntington's disease, Parkinson's disease. These are all illnesses that are not contagious, and they are the number one, as a, as a class, they're the number one health challenge facing human beings, period, around the world. They account for two out of three deaths around the world, and trillions, many trillions of dollars in health care costs. And untold amounts of misery. The most important point that I want to make about these kinds of diseases, and that I make every day pretty much on this program about these kinds of diseases, is that they're preventable. Even doctors admit they're preventable. Even the World Health Organization admits they're preventable. So that means two out of three deaths are preventable without doctors. Non-communicable diseases, non-communicable diseases, chronic degenerative diseases are largely preventable. That includes cancer, that includes diabetes, that includes heart disease. And the main causes of these kinds of health challenges are things like tobacco use, unhealthy diets, lack of physical activity, sedentary lifestyles, harmful uses or excessive uses of alcohol and drugs, both prescription drugs and illegal drugs. Keep in mind, illegal drugs and prescription drugs are pretty much the same things, except one is sanctioned and the other isn't. But from a biochemical, biological perspective, cocaine is the same thing as, as a beta blocker, marijuana, LSD, you name your favorite illegal drug, heroin, they're all pretty much the same. They're basically the same from a biochemical perspective, except they're not sanctioned. They're basically the same as a prescription drug. They just don't have the blessing of the medical model. This whole notion of the preventable nature of chronic degenerative diseases is, in my opinion, the biggest health issue of our times. The biggest health, health issue of all time. This health epidemic that we are suffering from, not just in this country, but around the world, is the biggest health epidemic in human history. And this issue has been presided over by a, a medicalized society that has more doctors per capita than any other culture in the history of mankind. And representatives of this medical model still want us to give them more control, still want us to give them more, uh, more regulatory power, more power over our lives, despite the fact that there are, uh, they've demonstrated that their model and that their protocols and that their regimens and that their advice is completely useless. They still want us to abdicate responsibility and give it to them. According to an article published in the October 3rd, 2013 edition of the New England Journal of Medicine, which is the classic mouthpiece for the doctor model of healthcare, quote, non-communicable diseases will be the predominant global health challenge of the 21st century. Prevention of premature deaths due to non-communicable diseases will be the main goals of health policy. So they want to take over. They want to be in charge of whether we get sick or not. Improving the, the article goes on uh, to say, improving the detection and treatment of non-communicable diseases and preventing uh, uh, complications will be the major goals of clinical medicine. A multi-level approach, get this, that includes policy, regulations, yeah, really regulations, what does that mean? Health education and efficient health systems to achieve these goals will be the mission, will be the mission of public health. Nowhere does it say exercise. Nowhere does it say change the way you eat. Nowhere does it say, say uh, nutritionally supplement. This is what the medical model wants. This is how the medical model operates. They want to be in charge of my health, of your health, of the health of our families. And the message here is that it's none of their business. Our health is our business. Our health is in the, in the realm of lifestyle choices. It's how we live our lives that determine whether we're healthy or not, not whether we get a checkup, not whether we go and get a diagnostic procedure, not whether we're medicalized on a beta blocker or a statin drug. As far as heart health goes, in the last few weeks we've been talking about cardiovascular disease, which is the health of the heart as well as the health of the blood vessels, and its relationship to breathing. No doctor involved for that. It's relationship to nutrition, no doctor involved there. It's relationship to emotions, no doctor involved there either. And it's lack of relationship to anything that the doctor tells you you have to do, including lower your cholesterol and take drugs and get devices implanted in your body. Pretty much any of the tools of the medical model have nothing, zippo, zero, not a nothing to do with good health, period. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back 
right after this. On the bright side, pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, if you're dealing with heart disease, you're on a prescription drug and you wean, want to wean yourself off of it, if you have any health challenge, you or a loved one has a health challenge and you want help with, we're here for you, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, if you have questions about ingredients or formulations, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we'll get your calls here in our next segment. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please head to our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, so we're talking heart disease, the electromagnetic nature of heart disease, the lifestyle aspects of heart disease. Heart disease is the quintessential lifestyle health challenge. Nobody has to have heart disease, hypertension, thick, sludgy, clotted blood, blood clots, aneurysm, strokes. These are just so tragically unnecessary, and there's nothing the doctor can do about it. And that's really the take-home message here, folks. This is lifestyle. This is not about medicalization, even though the doctors want to take over. And they want to take over partially because they're good people and partially because there's a lot of money to be made in statin drugs and in devices and in bypasses and all the other tools of the trade of the modern, modern medical model. It's not that the medical model is, use, is useless. There are things that the medical model excels in. I want to be very clear about that. I rip on doctors as much as anybody. I rip on the medical model as much as anybody. But as far as acute emergencies go, which is the true role of medicine, which should be the true role of medicine, this is where it really excels. It's not that the medical model is completely useless. It's just that the medical model is not capable of addressing what we're asking it to do and what it tells us it can do. For the past few weeks, we've been talking about the electrical nature of the heart as well as the electrical nature of the body. And while this electrical nature is too obvious for medical folks to ignore, there is, in my opinion, not enough emphasis placed on the relationship between bioelectricity, biological electricity, and good health. This phenomena of biological electronics, bioelectricity, is, it's not mainstream, but it's impossible to ignore by anybody who understands how the body works. We and the cells that make us up are all fundamentally electrical. And that means that the idea of a relationship between electricity and health needs to be focused on if we're gonna be disease free. And that is especially relevant for the health of the heart, which is the quintessential bioelectrical system. There's nothing more electromagnetic in the body. The heart and the brain are the two most electromagnetic systems, and the heart is way more electromagnetic, thousands of times more electromagnetic than the brain is. It is our most electrically active organ. So it just makes perfect sense that understanding electromagnetics, is, uh, bioelectromagnetics, is going to be critical if, we if we're going to understand heart health. Yet to this day, the major procedures, the major protocols for dealing with the heart, the medical model's major protocols, involve drugs and surgeries involve chemistry and manipulation with knives and scalpels cutting us open. The heart has an electromagnetic field that can be measured four to five feet outside the body. And the pulsation of the heart that happens every second is both the result and the cause of electromagnetic pulses that inform the rest of the body, as well as the brain. The heart talks to the brain via, the, via pulses. It informs the brain about what's happening via electromagnetic, pul electromagnetic pulses. It informs all of the cells, all of the organs, all of the structures of the body via electromagnetic pulses. And this electromagnetic field is actually called the biofield by scientists. If you go on to uh, uh, PubMed.com, which is a uh, clearinghouse of, of uh, scientific articles that's put together, compiled by the United States government, also uh, NIH.com, National Institute of Health.com, or ScholarGoogle.com. These are all websites with scientific information. You, you search for the term biofield, you're going to get thousands of hits. 
It's literally called the biofield by scientists. Of course, Reiki practitioners have been talking about this for years. Barbara Brennan, who's the author of the book Hands of Light, she's been talking about this stuff for decades. In 1950, there was a German physician named Dr. Reinhold Voll, V-O-L-L, and he discovered correlations between diseases and electrical pulsations and acupuncture points. And he wrote about this in 1950. He was a physician. He noticed that electrical conductivity dropped when there were biochemical disturbances that were associated with various diseases. Even more astoundingly, check this out, Dr. Vole found that when bottles of medicine that were not even opened were placed next to a patient, the patient's electrical field would change just by having the bottle of medicine next to the patient. Not only the patient wasn't taking it, the bottle was still sealed. We talked about uh, Royal Raymond Rife, Dr. Royal Raymond Rife. He discovered that cancers have a specific vibration that could be manipulated via electrical devices. And all this makes sense when we understand the electrical nature that underlies not just the physical body, but the entire universe. Everything's electrical. It's only chemical secondarily. Biochemistry, organic chemistry, follow electromagnetics. It's electromagnetics at the foundation. Of course, because no one can own electromagnetics, no one can profit from bioelectricity to the extent that they can profit from organic chemistry, which requires large investments in factories and industrial infrastructure. These aren't ideas you're going to hear about. You're not going to hear about this from the average doctor because the average doctor is hoodwinked into believing that it's about chemistry, not electricity. Why? Because chemistry is where the money is. It's like uh, John Dillinger. They asked John Dillinger why he robs banks. He said, that's where the money is. Ask a doctor, or ask a, a pharmacist, or ask a drug company. Why do, you work with, why do you work with drugs? Why do you work with surgeries? When we're, bi when we're bioelectrical and, and our emotions and, and our breathing are the real foundations of bioelectricity, how come you work with drugs? Because that's where the money is. How come you work with surgeries? How can you do heart bypasses when the heart is an electrical system? How can you beta block and how can you ablate and electrocute the heart? Because that's where the money is. But we don't have to worry about that, folks, because we have control over our bodies. You're not going to hear about these ideas of bioelectricity from the average doctor, who, like the patient, by the way, has been hoodwinked himself. The average doctor has been hoodwinked and entranced just like the patient. The average doctor goes to medical school where he's, he gets propagandized even more than patients do. He gets propagandized just like we do into believing that health is about drugs, health is about surgery. And of course, who do we buy the drugs from? Who do we get the surgical procedures from? The folks who are doing the hypnotizing. Of course, none of this matters because via nutrition, via diet, via food choices, Via oxygenation and respiration and relaxation and exercise, these are all strategies that leverage bioelectricity, not to mention our thoughts, our emotions, and our spirituality. Via all of these mechanisms that work foundationally at the bioelectrical level, we can take care of our own business. So the bottom line here is that while the medical model is helpless at restoring a broken down cardiovascular system back to health, it is absolutely useless, impotent, helpless. It can do nothing to restore the heart back to health. It doesn't matter because we can do it ourselves. And if you've been listening to this show for any length of time, you know exactly what it is that causes heart disease, and it's not egg yolks, and it's not butter, and it's not your LDL or your HDL or cholesterol or anything else. Those are just silly dogmas that are repeated, uh, memes that are being repeated based on marketing nonsense. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Back on the bright side, Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you if you have questions about heart disease, statin drugs, cholesterol, anything we're speaking about here today, or if you have a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, or if you have a success story or you'd like to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. Tomorrow we'll continue talking heart disease. I'm going to give you 13 ways to keep your heart healthy without the medical model, without hideous prescription drugs, without beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, without devices, without surgeries. Number one, it's going to be change the way we eat. That's absolutely, I don't want to say the most important, but it's, it's pretty darn important changing the way we eat eating less. We'll talk about this tomorrow as we continue talking about cardiovascular health. Heart disease, the leading killer in this country and around the world. 
and what you can do about it, what you can do to reverse it, and it is reversible, and what you can do to prevent it. That's the thing about these chronic degenerative diseases. When the body is degenerating, it can regenerate. Chronic degenerative diseases are reversible. They're not curable. You don't cure. Cure is magic. And doctors hate that word. And they'll tell you you can't cure a disease. And I can go to jail. I can lose my license if I tell you, oh, you'll cure diabetes with your, uh, with your healthy star pack or with your selenium. It's not about curing. It's about reversing. And no one can deny that degenerative diseases are reversible to a greater or lesser extent, depending on how much time you have. All right, 844 is our number. We'll get your calls here in a second. A couple stories I want to uh, read to you here, and then, uh, then we'll get your phone calls. This is from uh, uh, the University of Manchester in England. New compound discovered in the fight against inflammatory disease. This is the one thing that all chronic degenerative disease, all non-communicable diseases have in common. There's all kinds of chronic degenerative diseases. There's all kinds of these things, hundreds, thousands maybe. According to the World Health Organization, there are 12,800 different disease classifications. But they all have one thing in common, and that's inflammation. And so doctors in the medical model and drug companies are obsessed, obsessed with anti-inflammatory strategies, with shutting down inflammation. And I'm here to tell you, inflammation is your friend. Inflammation is a protective response. It is a boneheaded numbskull idea to shut down inflammation. What you want to do is you want to figure out why the inflammation is there and remove the trigger. According to this article, doctors, uh, researchers from the University of Manchester have discovered that a new drug can act as an anti-inflammatory. It's a drug called methanemic acid. That's how you say it here, methanemic acid. It shuts down inflammation. It's a brand name, uh, drug brand name Ponstol which is used to treat migraine headaches. Anyway, this drug has been found to have anti-inflammatory properties, and now all doctors are excited they can give you this new drug, or they'll be able to give you this new drug to shut down inflammation. Bad idea. If you shut down inflammation, you shut down the body's defensive response. If you shut down the body's defensive response without eliminating the attacking agent, what's that going to do for you? You think you'll be better off? You may be temporarily at a, experience a little bit less pain, but as long as you have an invading agent in the body, Shutting down inflammation is going to be counterproductive. Okay, one more here, and then we'll take, get your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. University of Virginia School of Medicine. Exercise can make cells healthier, promoting longer life study finds, whether it's running, walking, cycling, swimming, or rowing. Doing some form of aerobic exercise is essential to good health and well-being. Now, here's the thing about aerobic exercise. Nobody really wants to do it ahead of time, but we want to do it after we have experienced the joy of it. The body wants to move. When we move our bodies, our body secretes reward chemicals like dopamine, happy chemicals like serotonin. We feel better when we move our bodies. But the problem is, you got to kind of push yourself to do it. I don't really like to run, but I know that when I'm done running, I'm going to feel great. There's some days I don't want to go to the gym, but I know when I go to the gym or when I'm done with my, with my uh, exercise regimen, I'm going to feel great. And the worse you feel, the more important it is to exercise. And you can exercise from your wheelchair. You can exercise right after surgery. You can exercise if you're morbidly obese. Exercise is relative. So you don't have to spend an hour in the gym. It could be just getting up and down, uh, standing up out of a sitting position, getting up and down out of a chair, walking up the stairs carrying two gallon jugs filled with water or a backpack with a couple books in it. Walking up two steps can be exercise for some folks. The thing about exercise is as your body gets stronger and stronger, you'll be able to do more and more. And that's the goal. That's what you're looking for in an exercise program. It's not what you're doing. It's not the kind of exercise or the amount of exercise that you get the first day. It's how you improve, how much stronger you get, how much weight you lose, how much lower your blood, mark, your, your blood sugar markers are. And this is what occurs over the course of time. So don't be dissuaded by the fact that you can only do a small amount of bench presses. Or you can only do one or two steps. It doesn't really matter because the, it's the trend. It's, how, it's the improvement that you're looking for over the course of time. And you will, if you exercise, one of the guarantees is you'll always get better and better. That's the nature of exercise. You'll always get stronger and stronger. Start off slow. Start off small. Baby steps. And then increase on a regular basis. And oh, by the way, when you exercise, the rest period is just as, if not more important, as the stress period. Exercise is made up of two phases, stress and rest. And your muscles grow not when you're stressing them, 
but when you're resting them, it's this combination of stress and rest that accounts for muscle growth and accounts for all the, all the biochemical improvements and the, the, the biologic improvements and biological markers that occur with an exercise program. I call it exarest because it's exercise and rest, stress and rest, a little bit of stress and a lot of long, luscious rest. That's how the body likes it. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let us motivate to the phones and go to Anthony in Indiana. Good morning, Anthony. What's up, buddy? Thanks for holding. Hey, Pharmacist Ben. It's uh, yeah, Anthony Masso. Oh, it's always nurse a pleasure Anthony? to spend time with you. Yeah, yeah. Hey, definitely. buddy. Nice. It was good to meet you last month, too. So last month? Definitely. That's right. That's right. Good to meet you. It's good to meet you. Um, actually, I met you back in Indy last year, but it was oh, that's good right. To, that's right. It's good, good to see you again. Good are you going to be? At, are you going to be in Indiana? Oh, you're you're in Indiana now. Are you going to be at the Jamboree in November? That's right. Yep. Okay, I look forward to seeing you. What's going on? Oh, and thank yeah, you for those what, bumper stickers. Was that you that gave me the bumper stickers? No, that no, but, no. Uh, that was somebody else. Okay, it was another Anthony. So, what's going on, Nurse Anthony? How can we help you today? Yeah, so I wanted to talk about, um, I want to talk with you about and hear your insight on the addiction drug overdose epidemic oh, here in yeah. the United States. You know, according to some recent statistics from the CDC in the U.S., from 2000 to 2015, more than half a million people have died from drug overdoses. I know 91 Americans die every day from an opioid overdose. And I wanted to get your insight because, you know, as a nurse and someone who has worked with many people battling addictions and who recently has had communication with some hardworking leaders uh, who are working to help people with addictions. You know, I know I'm personally confident from, you know, what I've learned from you and Doc Wallach and others that uh, although there are multiple factors to consider, I believe a significant amount of these people had a history of, for example, chronic pain, anxiety, et cetera. And the question I hardly, if ever, hear asked within the medical community is, why do they have this pain or anxiety mm -hmm. in the first place? So I would love to hear your insight on this issue as a nutritional pharmacist, you know, regarding the importance of nutrition yes. you know, yes. in this context of this problem. Yes, it's a huge, huge problem. Now, aside from the fact that there are people who seriously do have pain, and I'm a big believer in pain pills. I am thrilled that we have pain pills. I mean, if you've ever been in, in like severe pain, post-surgical pain, if you've broken a bone or had a burn, I mean, praise God for pain pills, really. They used to, before they had pain pills and they did surgeries, they would have to hold you down while they cut you open. Can you imagine this? Or amputated you. So pain pills are an amazing, amazing medical advance. However, the addictive nature of them has to be we really have to do something about that. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we're back on The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and we're talking to Anthony in Indiana about addiction. Nurse Anthony, you there, my friend? I'm here. Okay, so, uh, yeah, this, this whole opioid addiction problem, you know, we know we have a big addiction problem anyway in this country. As, as our addiction to cigarettes, or as people are smoking less and less, it's, they're turning to more and more opiates. You know, cigarette smoking is down. People are smoking less cigarettes, but people are doing more drugs. It's because we have this addictive nature. This, human beings have an addictive nature. It has to do with control. So if you're addicted to anything, but particularly if you're addicted to drugs, and as I was saying, a pain pill drug, pain relieving drugs, as I was saying before break, I'm not down on pain relieving drugs themselves, but if you're addicted to pain relievers, here's a couple things that you want to do. First of all, there's existential pain as much as there's physical pain. We're in pain just from being alive. There's so much fear. There's so much stress. Everywhere you look, there's something to freak you out. I mean, don't watch the news. If you just watch the news, that's enough to freak you out, right? North Korea and Donald Trump and all the divisiveness and race relations. There's so much craziness and out-of-control chaos in the world that anything human beings can do to control their lives are going to do. And that's one of the things that's associated with addiction. Addiction has to do with control. It's a way that we can achieve control in a chaotic environment. So one of the first things you want to do uh, if you're dealing with some kind of addictive drug is learn to relax the body. In fact, if you're trying to withdraw from a drug, one of the, things, one of the reasons why people can't quit addiction is because when you quit a, an opioid, your body goes into a major stress response. So learning to relax the body is extremely important. By relax the body, I'm talking about relaxing the muscles, Progressive relaxation, starting with your toes and working your way up to your head. This, this is a strategy also you can use to help fall asleep. Hot baths, hot showers, massage, Reiki, touch, therapeutic touch, 
These are all ways to relax the body, extremely important. You can also use nutrients to relax the body. GABA, G-A-B-A, is wonderful for relax relaxing the body. Lithium orotate has relaxing properties. Magnesium, your Beyond Osteo FX from Longevity has relaxing properties. Of course, oxygenation is the key player in relaxing the body. And by oxygenation, I mean slow, deep, rhythmic breathing. All three of those are important. Slow, deep, rhythmic breathing. Learn to activate reward chemistry. There's a major relationship between the reward hormone dopamine and natural brain opiates. When we activate dopamine naturally, or if we activate dopamine with drugs, many drugs activate dopamine. When we activate dopamine, secondarily, we get a surge of natural opiates, brain opiates, endorphins. When we're addicted to opiates, we're hacking into the system. So we're getting a surge of opiates without having to get some kind of reward, without having to achieve something. So it's a way of cheating. But what you can do if you're really hooked on opiates is find a way to get rewarded. Finish a project. You know how good you feel when you finish a project? Do you ever experience pro uh, this, Anthony, where you procrastinate forever and then you finally get something done and you feel really good about it? You know what I'm talking oh, about? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you want yeah. how to clean out the garage. You're looking at the garage day after day after day. You hate doing it or you've got to write something and you don't want to do it. And finally, you clean out the garage. Finally, you write, uh, write that proposal or that article, whatever it is you've written or that letter, whatever it is you, you've been putting off for a long time. You get a surge of dopamine when you do that. That surge of dopamine feels good. And then, after you get the surge of dopamine, you get a hit of natural brain opiates. Your brain makes these natural opiates. They're called endorphins. So learn to complete a project. Learn to self-reward. Find a way to reward yourself. A lot of addiction is self-soothing. It's a way that we hack into our reward chemistry and our pleasure chemistry without really getting a reward, without really uh, getting some kind of pleasure. So learn to reward yourself. Learn to uh, do something that gets you a reward. And then finally, replace sugar, replace toxins with healthy substances or with nothing at all. Calorie restriction is a great way to reduce the stress levels that can be associated with, with uh, uh, various addictions. Addiction being a strategy for, for helping us cope with stress. So replacing sugar with electrolytes, with B vitamins, with vitamin C, with more protein, calorie restriction, these are all, other, these are all great strategies. So lower your cortisol levels by relaxation, activate reward chemistry uh, by finishing a project or doing something, and replace toxicity, especially sugar, with protein, electrolytes, B vitamins, vitamin C. And by the way, exercise fits into that whole reward component. We feel good after we exercise because we get a surge of dopamine. Reward, relax, replace. That's my strategy for uh, weaning, weaning yourself off of any addictive substance, particularly pain pills. All right, Anthony, I'm going to motivate here. Thanks so much for your call and for your kind words. Appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you in November at the Jamboree in Indiana. Take care, bro. All right, let's go to uh, Tadika in Texas. I hope I said that right. Tadika, good morning. How you doing, yes. Tadika? Yes, I'm good. Oh, I'm doing okay, but uh, psychologically, I'm not feeling about this, this diagnosis that my husband was diagnosed I'm sorry. with just recently. Which was? Um, myeloproliferate neoplastic disorder. Okay, so that's like a cancer of sorts. Um, also, anemia. Okay. Your your husband is something. An autoimmune disorder. Okay, your husband's not getting nutriated. So he's not absorbing his nutrients. Now, that tells me he's got a digestive problem, and he's probably had one for a long period of time. If that's, uh, it, it, uh, for all of these things to be happening all at once, he must have been dealing with some kind of digestive breakdown for years. How old's your husband? He's 73 years, but he wasn't, he wasn't feeling sick, nothing always. You he know, wasn't feeling no sick. No problem on Tadika, Tadika, taking one medicine for his blood pressure. Yes, I'm here. Tadika, listen, just because he wasn't feeling sick doesn't mean that things weren't happening. You can't, the body doesn't just tumble out of control that fast. It happens gradually. I know. So yeah, he just wasn't noticing that. things. So all we got to do is start noticing, okay? So yeah, first thing you want to do is you want him, you want to have him lay off of food for a couple of days. Get yourself some Swero V, S-U-E-R-O-V-I-E. -E. Call 866-735-2470. Tell him you want to order some Swero V or Swero V Gold, either one. Have him do half a bottle of Swero V every hour for two or two or three days. He's going to feel better right away. Well, Just those. 866-7-what? 735-2470. 866-735-2470. Yeah, okay, what is this? It's called 
S U E R O V I E, Swero V. S U E R O V I E. Okay. Okay, have him do half a bottle every hour for, uh, for two or three days. He's going to feel better right away. After two or three days, he's going to feel better. Okay? Now, when he starts eating again, ha when he starts eating again, have him ver pay very close attention to how his body responds to foods. He's going to get tired after he eats certain foods. He's going to get dizzy or, or he's going to be, uh, his head's going to be a little cloudy. He's not going to feel good after certain foods. He may have gas or bloating or digestive problems. Those are foods that need to be eliminated. Then he's going to want to start to protect and enhance the health of the digestive tract. This is where we're focusing on the intestines specifically. Get him on the nightly essence, have him doing vegetable juices, have him, do, have him do more fiber and fermented vegetables, fermented radishes, fermented beets, sauerkraut, fermented cabbage, and eating as little food as possible. Also chicken soup, homemade chicken soup. You want to focus on the gut in two directions. Number one, eliminating any foods that cause problems. And number two, making sure you're doing nutrients that support the health of the digestive system. He should start well, noticing I'm that he's... Well, you know. I'm doing like beets. I'm juicing He's, fame, I'm juicing beets, carrots, apples. Yeah, but sweetheart, you, Tadika, Tadika, sweetheart, listen, yes. you're giving him sugar, yes. pure sugar. Beets are sugar, oh. carrots are sugar, oh. apples are sugar. Oh. You're destroying okay. his bacteria with all that sugar. So what you oh. want to do is, it, what you want to do is juice car uh, uh, kale, juice spinach, okay. juice celery, oh. juice cucumber. Okay. You follow me? And then maybe a little piece of beet or a little piece of carrot. Okay. Or a little tiny chunk yeah. of apple. Easy on the sugar. The sugar is the enemy. All right? Now, can I want you, you to call me back you because I, I, you're going to need to call me back because we're out of time, but I want to work with you. I'm going to make you a case study, all right? We're going to help your husband, and we're going to help a lot of other people by helping your husband. So start off well, with a swear of V. His, platelet, his platelets are extremely high, and the doctor is giving him an, 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 an angolite to, to reduce his platelets. His platelets are extremely high. I can't help you with your doctor, okay? You know how I feel oh. about that. So I'm not going to go into that. I His know. platelets are high because he's bleeding. Because platelets are a way that the body controls bleeding. So he's leaking blood. So his platelets are high to clot the blood. There's something in there that's causing the blood to become toxic. The platelets are a response. The blood becomes toxic through the digestive system. Do you follow me? Oh. So oh. He's, the, the platelets are high. When you have high platelets, that means there's some kind of distress in the circulatory system. Usually that means the digestive system. That's why I gave that whole digestive workup. Work if you stay in touch oh. with me, Tadika, we're going to help your husband. All right, so you got a way to start. Swear V cleanse, yeah. elimination diet, good bacteria and fermented food. And then call us, back in about a, call us back in about a week or so. Let us know how you're doing, and I'm happy to work with you. And I apologize if I left you on hold. I tried to, uh, you know, I just never do get to all our calls. But anyway, thanks for calling. Thanks for listening. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves an awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.